الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة يقاتلون في سبيل الله فيقتلون ويقتلون وعدا علي حقا في التوراة والإنجيل والقرآن صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوة على محمد وآل محمد I begin in Allah's name the beneficent the merciful and on this most momentous night in which the religion of Islam was saved from the machinations and the tyranny of the ignorant that our blessed Imam has given his life and his family. And I send condolences to the whole human race and I send salams with you to Imam Hussain alayhi salam together. Assalamu alaykum ya Aba Abdillah Assalamu alaykum ya Ibn Rasulillah Assalamu alaykum ya Aba Abdillah al-Husayn Wa ala al-arwah al-lati halat fi-finai Alaykum minni salamu Allah Abadan ma baqeetu wa baqiya al-laylu wa al-naha Wa la ja'ala Allah wa akhra al-ahd minni li-ziyaratikum Together, As-salamu ala al-Husayn wa ala Ali ibn al-Husayn wa ala ashab al-Husayn wa ala awlad al-Husayn Khususun Sayyidi wa Mawlai ya Aba al-Fadl al-Abbas wa ukhtika Zainab wa bintika ruqayya jami'an shuhadai Karbala wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh salawat ala muhammad wa ala muhammad it's a somber night i advise us all in this blessed night the night of ashura this is not a small night this is a big night many many events took place on this night even musa alayhi salam as you know freed the bani israel on the day of Ashura. And as you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored this day. And we should be somber, we should be reflective and cognizant of the fact that our new year as Muslims begins with meditation, reflection, and somberness, not with popping champagnes and being merry in silly ways. For our religion is rational, it's grounded, it's meaningful not in animalistic ways where we just become reckless with our behaviors and it leads us to become a reckless society. Rather, we're controlled, we're compassionate, we're loving, we're caring, we're sharing, we're giving, and we're forgiving, inshallah. And tonight, I would like to speak about many subjects, but I know, and I'm sincere about this, that no matter how much I talk and no matter how much I express myself, I can never do justice to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Never. No matter what I say, no matter how much we expose, we can never do justice to him. 
for his sacrifice with that level of empathy is just impossible to reach. Suffice it to say though, that when we make an effort and we shed tears, tears of understanding, tears of compassion, tears of sympathy, hopefully tears of empathy, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept us among those who love his agents. When Allah says, Fi buyutin adin Allah an turfa'a wa yudhkara fi hasmu yusabbihu lahu fiha bil ghudu'i wal asal rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'an an dhikrillah wa iqami salati wa ita'i zakati yakhafuna yawman tataqallabu fi al-quloob wa la basar. Allah says in houses who he has allowed to be remembered في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه elevated and remembered through that house meaning when people say do we need intercessors is intercession allowed in Islam is it allowed for you and I to consider others as a means to God and I posit many questions on this and I want you to ponder all of us the most profound intercession if you and I have a doubt in this matter the commemoration the shedding of tears the visitations of the graves of the chosen agents of God if you and I have a problem with it then you and I have a problem with the following when Allah commanded the angels when Allah decreed to the angels that I am going to place on earth my representative, you and I know unequivocally that shirk and bowing to anyone other than Allah is a cardinal sin. When you bow to anyone other than Allah, it is association with God, meaning idolatry, polytheism. We all agree with this. This is why we are Muslims. What differentiates Islam from all the religions in the world is no one has the purity of monotheism but our religion. No one. Christians, Jews are monotheistic, but their monotheism is not pure, with all due respect. They give a son, قالت اليهود أزير ابن الله وقالت النصارى المسيح ابن الله Allah says in the Quran. The Jews claim that Uzair was the son of God, historically. And the Christians claim that Jesus is the Son of God. That tainted Tawheed is not equivalent to the way we say Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Wa Lam Yulad, Wa Lam Yakullahu Kufuan Ahad. Look at the purity of these verses. When the Prophet placed this on the Kaaba, they said, Ma hada kalamul bashar, hada kalamullah. This is not the sayings of a human being. And we say what? Say God is uniquely one, unique. Not wahid, ahad. Wahid you can add, ahad you can't add. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Allah is independent. He does not beget, nor is he begotten. And there is no one like him. No equal. Alladhi laysa kamithli shay. There is no comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, Allah commanded the angels to bow to Adam. Interesting. Technically speaking, when shaitan refused to bow, Allah says, فَسَجَدُوا كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ إِلَّا Iblis, Except Iblis refused. Would you not say logically that Iblis was a pure muwahid, he didn't want to worship anyone other than Allah, and therefore he rejected even Allah to bow to anyone else? <laughs> You would think that yes, he's the, nice, he's the best one among all because he's refusing to bow to anyone but Allah. What a foolish idea, for it is Allah who is the authority. Hmm? When they are told and asked who created the universe, they say Allah. Allah says, say glory be to Allah. How little do they understand? For there's a difference in saying Allah and glory be to Allah. 
That when Allah commands, Ya Yuladina Amanu, La Tukadimu Bayna Ide Illahi wa Rasuli, Wattakullah, or you believe, do not go ahead of Allah and His Messenger and be God conscious. So when shaitan is refusing to bow to Adam, you would think that's a great thing because he's refusing to be a, one who bows to anyone but Allah. So then Allah should have rewarded him. Rather, Allah condemned him. Ukhraj, get out. Fainnahu rajim. You know, you are cursed. Why? Because Allah says, if you do not take my shifa, if you do not recognize my agents on earth, and if you do not honor them, and if you think you are better than them, and if you refuse to obey my command when I have appointed them, hmm, and that they are my agents by which their hand is my hand, their tongue is my tongue. So when you and I question this, tonight we are commemorating Imam Hussain alayhi salam, <clears throat> how important is he in our deen. I question this. That why did Allah ask the angels, by the way, Malakut. Malakut means the angelic environment. Iblis is not an angel, by the way. People say he's a fallen angel. He is not an angel. He is of the jinn. He is made of intense fire. Angels are made of light. <clears throat> you and I are made of clay. Now you would think, so the reason Shaitan, by the way, Shaitan is a title. His real name is Iblis Azazil. Shaitan, by the way, just a quick footnote, since it's prevalent, the root word is Shatana. Shatana means that which harms you. Humans are also known as Shayateen if they disobey Allah. Anything that harms you becomes Shaitan. So as Shaitan, is the arch deceiver, the arch danger. Did we not warn you? Do not obey this one. He is your arch enemy, Shaitan. So when he was commanded to bow also because he was in the dominion among the angels which Allah had conferred upon him due to his prior worship in elevation. But it got to his head. He became arrogant, thinking I'm special. So it's a warning to us when we become religious and pious and we become famous and we become well-known, lest you and I become arrogant and we lose it like shaitan, God forbid. So that's why he was also commanded. But the wisdom of Allah in commanding the angels to bow to Adam and not to Allah is profound. It's deep. And one of the wisdoms that we experience exposed in this brief conversation is the fact that Allah is saying when I choose my agents and I command you to obey them you must obey them it is my hukam it is my decree and if you disobey it I condemn you this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are those today in the Middle East with red beards who all sticks and wants to, want to hit us every time we want to go near the Dari of our blessed Prophet or Ahlul Bayt. They want to disconnect us from that love when God has put love in us towards them. Just like when we love our children, we want to hug them. It's interesting when I go to Medina and I see the majority of the people there are not from the Jafari school of thought, but they are eager and dying to touch the sarcophagus, the Dari of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'm wondering why. Human nature, the love, the connection. Allah says, that's my connection to you. An-Nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusim. The Prophet has greater right over you than you have over yourself. And Allah loves the Holy Prophet. As we say, imagine the following verse in Surah Al-Ahzab. You know, there is one thing for Allah to command you and I to do it. There is another for Allah to do it first and then to command us. It's very different. When Allah commands us to maintain prayers, aqim is salah. It's a command of Allah. Here in this ayah, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it first, then he tells us to do it. You know which one I'm alluding to? In Allah. Indeed, Allah and the angels send blessings to the Prophet. Ya amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah, 
indeed Allah and the angels do it first. Can you imagine? Send blessing to the prophets. How great a man he is. That when Allah, Subhanallahi asra bi abadihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I took this servant of mine to the furthest heavens. I took him so close to my throne. Throne here is not physical, understand. It's where the authority of God is so pure that no creations can enter it, except the one Allah chooses. This is how honored the Prophet is. Now if you read the Quran, the way Allah honors him, it's a miracle that none of us as Muslims worship him as a God. It's a miracle the Muslim world does not worship Rasulullah given the power and authority he has. That's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how important is my Prophet? Ask any Muslim in the world, can you say La ilaha illallah and it's enough? At the end of the day, it wasn't the role of Prophets to take us towards La ilaha illallah. Isa alayhi salam in the Bible says, Hear ye Israel, your Lord is one. The first commandment of Jesus alayhi salam in the Bible to the people, he says, Hear ye Israel, your Lord is one. La ilaha illallah, there is no God but one. Every Prophet was a Muahid who promoted oneness of God. Every Prophet. That was there. So can I say today, La ilaha illallah, I'm Muslim? No, you're not a Muslim. Two nights ago, a brother came to me and says, I want to do my shahada. Beautiful. After I spoke about that boy becoming a Muslim, his name was Abbas, original name was George. Our brother came to say, I want to do my shahada. I said, mashallah, are you ready? He said, yes, I've been searching. I know the way. So what are you going to do? I said, you know that you already have the shahadatain, you have the Islam in your heart, now utter it with your tongue and put it in action and go purify yourself. For Allah tonight, after your shahadatain, Allah will erase all your personal sins, all of them. Wow, amazing. How important is shahadatain? Ask to a billion Muslims. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. How important is the name Muhammad? You go to the World Book of Records and see which name is number one in the world. Even England, the United Kingdom, which has its tentacles in the chaos of the world today, the British government has so many tentacles in the chaos it has caused on earth today. Subhanallah, it's unbelievable, unprecedented. Yet their firstborn, the most, the males, are the most names given in the United Kingdom is Muhammad. Salawat. Allah says, wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. We raised your name. How important is raising the name? Allah says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. مثل نورك مشكات في مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب ذري يوكد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولا لن تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس How beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Allah is the light of the universe The similitude of this light مثل نوره is like a niche in which there is a lamp and the lamp is covered with glass which glitters like stars hmm? Look at it Amazing analogy. You know, the Mufassirin, when they read this ayah in Surah An-Nur, they are unable to fathom its vastness of message. And Allah said, وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْهُ نَارٍ Meaning, first of all, it is lit with a special oil lamp. مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ From a blessed tree. Zaytunatin olive. La sharqiyatin wa la gharbiya. Neither east nor west. It's special, chosen by God. You and I cannot appoint imams. You and I cannot appoint khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 124,000 prophets came. Not a single human being was allowed to choose. Not a single one. Why? Give us some practice on how to do it. Teach us. How can an ignorant society choose a leader? It's like putting the cart in front of the horse. 
How can you and I gather together a 51% voting route and say we're going to choose you to lead us when we are all relatively ignorant? It is only Allah who chooses. Allah says you can't. Not even a prophet. Can you imagine Musa alayhi salam is told by Allah, idhhab ila Fir'aun, innahu tagha. Go to Fir'aun, he has exceeded his boundaries. Musa is not only a Nabi, he is a Rasul. Ulul Adham, not an average prophet. Extremely chosen. Quran mentions his name. One of the most mentioned names in the Quran is Musa alayhi salam. The most revered prophet, one of the most, Ibrahim, Musa, Nuh, Isa, all of these highly revered prophets. He says, go to Pharaoh, he has exceeded his boundaries. Musa is a prophet, his brother Harun is a prophet. Can't he just look at his brother and says, come on, I've got a mission, I choose you. I choose you, oh, oh Harun, come with me. Quran says even a prophet who is an ulul adam cannot choose. <laughs> He's talking to Allah, he says, وَجْعَلْ وَزِيرًا مِنْ أَهْلِ هَارُونَ أَخِي Make my brother my helper. If a prophet cannot choose, a Nabi and a Rasul, who's the highest in the stations of God, cannot choose on one mission, his brother who's already a prophet, how can you and I choose? Explain to me, please. In a million years, I can't understand that. Allah says, I choose. Nurun ala nur, special. They come from a special blessed progeny from a tree that is pure. Shajaratin, Mubarakatin, Zaytunatin, La Sharqiyatin, Wala Gharbiya. And Allah says, Who are they? Wala ulam tamsas hunar. Fire doesn't touch them. Meaning, Iblis who's made of fire cannot touch them. And Yomul Qiyamah, hell will never touch them because they are pure. وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْهُ نَارٌ نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ Light upon light يَهْدِ اللَّهُ لِنُورِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ And God guides to the light who he wants. Imam Hussain alayhi salam is نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ Imam Ali alayhi salam نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ Imam Hassan Fatimut al-Zahra salamu alayhi Zayna These people نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ لِنُورِهِ Imam Zainu al-Abidin alayhi salam نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ Light upon light. And then after this verse, is the verse I just recited before. Fi buyuti nadin Allah. In houses which God has exalted. And through them, God is remembered night and day. Through them. This commemoration is not some concoction we have. This is the command of God. This is the greatest worship you and I will do is when we remember Ahl al-Bayt. It's the greatest worship when we recognize the agents of God. For then shaitan cannot fool us. For we have role models, we have people to hold on to. For Allah is saying to Iblis, if you refuse to bow to Adam, get out of my dominion, for I curse you. So, when people say Shifa, should we mention the names of Ahl al-Bayt? You know how important it is to mention them? If you look at the stories of Ahl al-Bayt, the Prophet himself, if you see it's Haifa Sajjadiyah of Imam Zainul Abideen, amazing, 34 years, Imam Zainul Abideen alayhi salam, spent decades and he wrote after Karbala it's if we talk about it it makes my skin shudder for how could a man with such level of patience spend the time to write dua meaning prayers for you and I to meet any condition you have problems with health there's a dua Finances, there's a dua. Somebody says bad things to you, dua. You want to do something, the dua. There's a dua for any issue you and I have. Imam Zayn al-Abidin has written them. You look at the Mus'haf of Imam Ali alayhi salam, same thing. What you find is the dua, even in, when you look in dua kumail, for example, you will notice if you want to send the dua properly, you give recognition to Ahl al -Bayt. So when we started with the dua, we said, بِحَقِّ مُحَمَّدٍ وَأَنْتَ الْمَحْمُودِ وَبِحَقِّ عَلِيٍ وَأَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى وَبِحَقِّ فَاطِمَةٍ وَأَنْتَ فَاطِرِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَبِحَقِّ الْحَسَنِ وَأَنْتَ الْمُحْسِنِ وَبِحَقِّ الْحُسَيْنِ وَأَنْتَ قَدِيمُ الْإِحْسَانِ وَبِحَقِّ تِسْأَةِ الْمَعْصُومِينَ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ الْحُسَيْنِ وَبِحَقِّ كَافْ هَا يَا عَيْنْ صَاد وَبِحَقِّ هَا مِيمْ عَيْنْ سِينْ قَافْ and then ask for prayers. 
This kind of prayer, even Imam Hussain alayhi salam, before he goes, and I will recite it tonight, before he goes to become martyred, he holds the hand of Imam Zainal Abidin on his chest. He said, my mother has taught me this, which was taught by Jibreel to my grandfather, the Holy Prophet. Recite it, bihaqqi yaseen, wal Quran al-Hakim, wa bihaqqi taha, wal Quran al-Majeed. You find that when you look at this, and he's saying, now, after you recite this dua, now ask Allah. Why? Because Allah says, you recognize my agent. You understand who my agents are and why it is so important for you to understand. Because when you and I have our imams and Ahlul Bayt and the prophets in our vision, then you and I will have a difficult time doing haram. You and I will say, like people ask me this question, you know, this smoking of shisha, you know, it's not, it's sort of like, Mubar, maybe. No mar I said, no marja. We have maraja who condemned it, made it haram. So don't go there. And you don't need a marja to tell you this. It's like you got cyanide. You're going to send a picture of cyanide to the marja and say, can I drink this? One question I asked them. I said, can you see the Prophet doing this? And they said, no, no, I, I, I can't. I said, then take it off. Why is shahada attained then? Why do I need to say shahada on Muhammad Rasulullah? Hmm? Could you see Imam Mahdi Ta'ala Faraj doing it? Could you ever see him doing this? Could you see him smoking? Could you see him in, your con in my conscious? It's impossible for it to penetrate in my head, even if I was to do that. I can never see them doing it. This is why Allah says it's so important to hold on to them. For when you see them as your ultimate role model, you will follow their footsteps. If you obey Allah and the Prophet, your deeds will be intact. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. When we talk about Imam Hussain and his family leaving, these are not ordinary people. These are extraordinary chosen people. And their power is so amazing that even in the geopolitics of the world today, they are afraid of you and I crying or believing in them or loving them. They are so afraid that clandestine organizations study our psychology in Ashura as to what is the impetus that will bring justice on earth, that will break the shackles and the knees of the tyrants of the world. It's going to come to the blood of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You find that Imam Hussain alayhi salam, how do we know he's great? Allah has appointed him, but how do you know he's great? Isa alayhi salam says, judge the man by the fruits he bears. Very wise. Judge the man by the fruits he bears. So true. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna Allah shtara. Indeed, Allah, let me translate. Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property. For this they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. A promise which is binding on him in the Torah, in the Injil, in the Quran. It's amazing when you read this verse in Surah At Tawbah, verse 111, you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased. How does Allah purchase? It's free will. You and I have to sell it. But these agents of Allah, who Allah creates special, chosen by him, commanded for you and I to follow them and to consider them essential. And if you remove them out of the equation, we are lost. So for you and I to say, I don't need a prophet. I don't need Ahl al-Bayt. I don't need anything, you know, hasbuna kitab Allah. No, no. Kitab Allah has two. If you look at the kitab, the book of God commands us to obey them. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, atiyu Allah, wa atiyu Rasul, wa uli l'amri minkum. So if we say kitab is enough, the kitab is telling me, go and obey Allah and the Messenger and those with authority from among you. Here, wa uli l'amri minkum, meaning now. Imam al-Hujjah, jalallahu ta'ala, faraja, is our Imam now. He is the uli l'amri minkum. Please understand that. Minkum. Meaning, not min hum, min kum, not them, now. There's always a living imam, and Allah says, obey them. It's a command of Allah. So when we talk about these personalities, we wonder, why are they so important? 
Human nature is such that we are driven by role models. And if you look at the core principles, you will see leadership is what drives everything. When you have good leadership, you execute. When you lack leadership, even if you have the capacity to do something, you won't be able to do it. If you took the best basketball players in the world and you didn't give them a captain or you didn't give them a coach and they played, the likelihood of them winning is low. But they are the best in the world. Yeah, but they're not coordinated. They don't have a single vision. Leadership is lacking, so it's chaos. In a corporation, if you ever incorporated a company in any civil society, you will notice that you must designate a leader who is going to be the person who is going to be responsible for the future and the management of this business. And you can designate yourself as the director or the president or whatever, but you have to be the leader first before you can designate a company. Why? Because by law of nature, we are bound by leadership. Our countries demand leadership. We have to have leaders. We appoint them. They are selected sometimes. Sometimes they are monarchies. Nonetheless, there has to be a leader. Why? Because that's how you bring harmony. Leadership. Extremely important. Right? So when we examine the leadership in Islam, if the world today is bereft of manager, a leader who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to appoint, then mankind will be in a state of chaos, anarchy. Leadership is extremely important. But you will notice, and Imam Ali alayhi salam says in Najul Balagh, the quality of the people designates the leader. And the leader tends to be the one who will now designate the quality of the people. Implying that when you see bad leadership, you'll find the people tend to be bad. If you find that there's good leadership, people tend to become good. So that is why it is so important for you and I to designate within our hearts, who is my leader? Allah says, your prophet is your leader. Then after him, who reflects who follows the footsteps of the Prophet, you must have a living leader chosen by Allah. That's why it's so important. You and I, by the way, if you look at our societies today, the likes and dislikes of our children, the societal traditions that you and I have, is because others are doing it. We are all affected by our surroundings. That is why it is extremely important for you and I. In tonight's remembrance of Shahad of Imam Hussein, in every step he took, you say, that is my leader. And every move he made is what I want to live by. It is by the standards of that sacrifice that I want to live. So how do we know Imam Hussain is an amazing, is the finest leader in the world? He sacrificed his self for Allah. And I'll tell you, therefore I can tell you that Imam Hussain loves Allah. You might say, how do we know I love you? If I say to a brother, I say, I love you. I say to my Hajj Hassan, I love you. That's just a sentence, means nothing. I love you, Hajj. I love you. Okay, mashallah, I love you. You love me too. What does that mean? It means nothing. It's just words. It's when you live the love that you really love. And how do you live the love? You must sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice, you don't love. You go on a vacation with somebody you love and no problems, you don't know that's real love. It's when you have problems and the person is willing to sacrifice themselves, their wealth, and their happiness for your happiness, that's love. Allah says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not achieve righteousness until you give with that which you love most. Imam Hussain alayhi salam loves Allah. He gave what he loves the most, not only his children, not only his wealth, but his self, his head. This is true love. And I'm telling us all, if you and I really want to understand love, go there. Because when you conquer that love, there will be no greater love. For there is no greater love than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the word Allah, if you break it down deep, Allah matabatabai, rahmatullah says, the depth of the word Allah means one who is most worthy of being loved. That's the deep meaning of the name Allah. One who is most worthy. But when does that love come, brothers and sisters? You know when it comes to purity? Is when you are abandoned. Is when everything is taken away from you. 
When things are taken from us and the promises are broken and people invite and they turn their backs the way they did to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and the swords were being sharpened to kill him when yesterday the Prophet was carrying him on his back and kissing him lip to lip, that today they abandoned him in a heartbeat. People said, you, the prince of the Prophet who carried you, hmm? Lahmuhum lahmi wa damuhum dami. Their flesh is my flesh, their blood is my blood. You, people turned a blind eye. But the Imam was in love with Allah. Imam Musa Najafar al kadhim was in prison for decades. He loved Allah, he didn't care. But there is nothing more beautiful when it comes to love. It's when the world abandons you. That's why Allah in the Quran says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ These are the ones who Allah sends blessings to and these are the ones who are guided. Who? Allah says we will test them with loss, life, fear, everything, everything. Everything is laid out. Karbala is one of the best examples in history, in human race of this where Imam is giving everything fear they would stand up there unafraid everything is on the table everything Allah says give the good news to the patient ones who when they are in this difficult time they say we are from Allah and we will return to him this is quintessential depth of love love when you and I do something for Allah and our friends are going to abandon us don't be afraid when you and I take the step towards Allah I know friends for example who want to pray somebody prays you say oh my friend is praying I'm not no longer with him I know so many sisters who are afraid to wear hijab because they will lose their friends. I know a sister who came to me and says, Brother, I don't wear hijab. I go out sunbathing with my friends. But now I've realized hijab is important for me. You see? But I'm afraid. I said, what are you afraid of? She said, I'm afraid my friends will abandon me. I said, for doing a good deed, they will abandon you? What kind of friends do you have? Can you imagine when you do something good, your friend abandons you? Is that really a friend or an enemy? That's an enemy keeping you inside the ditch who's making sure you never get out and you think you're so safe because you got this friend next to you. It's an enemy. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, I'd rather have a wise enemy than a foolish friend. At least the wise one will think twice before he kills me. But this foolish friend is killing me in their pretentious love. So I said to her sister, don't be afraid. She says, I'm afraid. I said, fall in love with Allah and you need it and you need to be abandoned sometimes take the step of Allah and be purified brother I, I can't I said try it you will be amazed for this modesty and dignity that has entered your heart is precious and shaitan doesn't want you to have it he wants you to be abused so give it up she said okay she put the hijab on and those same friends not only gave her, her up they cursed her. They condemned her. She said, oh my God, I never knew these are the people I spent decades growing up together that now they're cursing me simply because I put a head covering and I'm wearing loose clothes. They cursed me. I said, sister, they were not your friends. They were your enemy. They would have killed you in a heartbeat. Who wants them? We want purity. We want companions of Imam Hussein. Thousands came with him. Imam says, no, I want purity. I want the special ones, the ones who are hardcore believers of God, the ones who are real. And you know, all you need is one good friend. In life, you have one good friend like that, you have gold, you have a treasure. She gave up, she became lonely. She said, brother, what do I do? I said, pray to God. You're not lonely, what are you talking about? You are actually very weak in yourself. 
You are so dependent on accolades. Your feeling is dependent on other people's feelings. I feel good because my friends feel good about me. What kind of a silly thought is that? We live like that in the world today. We are living likes, you know. Please like me. Please. How many likes do I have? How many likes? I'm wondering, Ya Allah, I can't sleep at night. How many likes did I get today? Do people like me? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, but I have so many likes. You think Allah is going to ask on Judgment Day, uh, Hassanen, how many likes did you have? يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُوا مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنَطَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On that day, nothing will help you. But hearts that are tranquil, how do hearts become tranquil? Unless they purify Allah bi zikrillah. When you do zikr of Allah and you hold on to Him and you fall in love with Him and you hold on to Him and say, let the world come or it doesn't come. I don't care. For my service is to my Lord. And when I go six feet down, even my loved ones cannot jump in. They have to bury me. And even if they stand there for a day or two, they have to go home. You and I have to go alone. Please, we as a human race somehow have forgotten this part. That we are alone with Allah. And I tell you, when Allah helps us, oh my God, you own the universe. Allah says in Yansurukum Allah, Fala ghaliba lakum. Wa in yahdulkum. فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعَدِ When your God, when Allah, إِنْ يَنْصُرُكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ And if God doesn't help you, who will help you? You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the governor of California, famous actor, governor, amazing Mr. Universe, phenomenal body, they have a statue of him in California. And he was trying to go into the museum. They wouldn't let him go in. He said, this is my statue. You know, he took a, a sleeping bag and slept outside of it. He said, see, all this is all fake. They gave me popularity because I was famous then. Today, I'm not as famous. So you see, they don't want me anymore. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Subhanallah. Think about it. Allah is showing him, look, your fame, your glory, your wealth. Your beauty, your muscles. Is it helping you? Nothing. The world has thrown you, hasn't it? You are on your own. Come, come to your Lord. For when I take everything away from you, I love you. When I strip things away from you, I love you. For if you understand the value of loss and you really hold on and you will see that Allah, when he loves you, he challenges you and says, okay, I'm going to take this away from you. What are you going to do? Many of us complain, oh, there is no God. I don't like him. He doesn't like me. He took my toys away from me. No. No. Allah says, I love you too much. You're too distracted with these phones and material and money. Give it up. Look at me. When you do takbir, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Successful are the believers who when they come to prayers, they're in a state of khushu. You and I are distracted. Allahu Akbar, so what stock should I buy now? Where should I go? Who should I call? What was the person who called? Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi In other words, Salah says, it's an amazing thing when you forget something, just open up the carpet mat and start praying. You'll remember everything. Because shaitan is now whispering, stop, stop, stop. Don't talk to this God. No, you're with me. You're going to hell with me. And you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, no, 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 no. That's why when I remember Imam Hussain, when he's all alone tonight when I speak about him. Oh my God. It's the most powerful moment. When he says, Who is there to help me? Imam Zainul Abidin says, I reply you, my father. Imam says, no, not you. I'm calling the people. Are you all standing up for justice? Are you rising against tyranny? The Prophet said in his famous hadith, and Imam, Imam reiterates this hadith, I'll recite it. Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Muhammad. He says, O people, the Messenger of Allah has said, I'll just read the English part. Whoever is faced with a ruler who is oppressive and who permits what is prohibited by Allah, who breaks the covenants of Allah, who contradicts the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah 
and who acts with wickedness and gross injustice towards people, if he does not oppose him, either by action or by words, it would be right for Allah to put him into such an abode that befits him, meaning maybe hell. So when you and I sleep at night and no tyranny is taking place, injustice is taking place, not only on the geopolitical level, but among our societies where people are infusing drugs into our children, we're infusing haram, gossiping, backbiting, indecency as part of our social, social fabric, and you and I see it, and riba is taking place, where backbiting is taking place, fault finding is taking place, the Prophet says, if you don't do something to stop it, you will be like them. A man comes to Imam Jafar Sadiq says, my grandfather served water to the army of Yazid. He didn't fight, didn't lift a sword. The Imam says, he's no different than the one who lifted the sword. For they are the same. They helped each other. They, uh, they were enablers. So our tacit silence and acquiescence to the pressures of society that takes us to become indecent, immoral, unethical human beings is tantamount to the leader who's promoting this madness. So we must stop. For it is not allowed upon us to say that, well, it's okay, they are doing it. Allah is condemning that, what have you done? Therefore answer me, and believe in me, so that you are guided. So this sister, by the way, who gave up her friends, was lonely for a few months, but she could see she was getting purified. It's like going to the gym, you're so out of shape, you're sweating profusely until you get in shape. Then the world changes. That sister today, mashallah, has maintained the hijab, has never accepted it. She says, and the friends I have now are priceless. I have a few, three, four of them, but they are priceless. I had dozens before. They were useless. Now they are priceless. But how did it come? With loss. You see? You find in history, when the Prophet hears that Jibreel tells him soon after you, this grandson of yours, Hussein ibn Ali, is going to be butchered and martyred and beheaded. And Jibreel brings the soil of Karbala to the Prophet. And the Prophet is crying. He said, really? He said, yeah. Allah says, you know, I mean, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَةً hmm? When my help comes to you with victory and people are entering the religion of Islam in armies, afwaja, Muhammad, Muhammad, everybody's praising the Prophet. Can you imagine how painful that must be? <laughs> that when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of people in your audience and you know that as soon as you leave, the very one you have appointed who is going to be his representative, and he says, Hussein no minni wa ana min al Hussein. Hussein is from me, and I'm from Hussein, that the Prophet is holding this earth and says that they will do this to my grandson. I said, Yes, so you and I must question ourselves for how party are we to this thought? That we, be, we bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and the Prophet is our messenger. Will we stand with our living Imam? Will we promote justice? Will we demote indecency and tyranny? Will we? Are we? The little things you and I do to conform with societies, the lies that we concoct, the pain we cause each other, the lawsuits we give unnecessarily, all for the sake of money and power, these are all tantamount to equivalent to what happened in Karbala. Will we? Do we have that capacity? And the Prophet takes this earth and gives it to Umm Salma and says, Umm Salma, hold this. For there will come a day when it will turn red. And on the day of Ashura, it turned red. And Umm Salama cried. And she said, my prophet told me this will happen. So, but Imam Hussain alayhi salam, alone. Alone. Why? Sacrificial. Unafraid. But I'll tell you, even the Quran states, الكفار, that because Imam Hussain alayhi salam went, Rukkaan Sujjadan Yabtahuna Fadla min Allah wa Ridwan, Simahum fi wujuhim min atharis sujood, you will see them praying, giving charity. Rukkaan Sujjadan 
for the pleasure of God. They're in love with God. Unafraid, you and I must keep salah. That the action of Imam Hussein in Karbala, there is not enough time, and I know I can't do justice. In this momentous night, usually, as you know, the day of Shahada of Imam Hussein is recited in the daytime. Inshallah, Hajj Musa is going to recite this. But tonight, I will recite this conclusion of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And then tomorrow, we will discuss the aftermath of Karbala, which I think is when the real Karbala started. The aftermath. The movement of Imam Zain al-Abidin. The movement of Zaina. Oh my God. Its reverberations are until now. You and I are a product of this, this incredible power that the Imam gave sacrifice. He went forward unafraid. And it is so tragic in that moment of solitude. I want us to touch solitude. I want us to be alone. Let's remove this distraction of the world. Our friends, our families, our money, our looks. Push it aside. Hold on to Allah. وَتَوَكَّلَ Allah. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The believers are those who when they hear the name of Allah, their hearts palpitate. وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ When the verses of the Qur'an are recited, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا Their faith increases, and in their Lord they have trust. Trust. This is a whole conversation about tawakkal. What tawakkal ala Allah wa kafa billahi wakila. Have faith in Allah. Trust. Imam Hussain alayhi salam has so much trust. It's un unprecedented in history. If you look here, Imam Hussain alayhi salam is doing dua. It's an amazing dua. Allahumma anta. Thiqati fi kulli karbi. Allahu Akbar. Our Lord, upon you is my trust in every distress and hope in every calamity. And it is you who is the source of confidence and esteem in every affair that confronts me. You are the guardian of every blessing, the master of every good work, and the goal of every desire. This Imam recited before he left to become martyr. Tonight, this sacrifice is so profound, and tomorrow, inshallah, the maqtal will recite the full history. But I wanted to absorb in our hearts this solitude of Imam Hussein, all along. When he says, Hal min nasin yansu, who's there to help me? You and I, if we don't go through that, we haven't really embarked towards Allah. When you and I speak the truth, the world will condemn us because they don't like it. When you and I hold salah, the world will feel angry. I've seen it sometimes when we pray, even in Muslim communities, if we go to a restaurant and it's salah time, we ask them, can we pray? They say, no, 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 there's no place here. So we take something and we go outside on the lawn. And when we're praying, we see some people, when they come, they look at us with anger like, did you have to pray now? Why? Because when you pray, you remind. فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ سَيَذَّكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى وَيَذَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى أَلَّذِي يَصْلَى النَّارَ الْكُبْرَى Remind them. Reminding is beneficial. Who will listen to you? The one whose heart is ready to receive. The one who will be against you is the one who is wretched. And he will look at you. What are you doing? When you and I want to hold on to deen, when you and I say, I'm going to quit my bad habits, I'm going to become a better person, you will see the ones who will attack you first are your friends. Watch. And family. Family and friends will be the ones who will be your first line of attack. When that happens, don't quit. You know there's something good coming. For this is what Imam is teaching me. He's teaching me that watch me. Watch what's happening to me right now. I am giving everything up to teach you how to be alone with your Lord, how to fall in love with your Lord. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni, then obey me. If you claim to love Allah, obey me, follow me. 
So Imam Hussain alayhi salam on the night of Ashura, as you know, when he gets, when Ibn Ziyad sends the letter to Umar ibn Sa'd, and Umar ibn Sa'd tells him, he's, he's told, start the war immediately, immediately. Suddenly you find the Imam, he's seeing this army attacking him. He says, whoa, hold on. I want to talk to Ibn Sa'd. So Imam Hussain and Abbas alayhi salam, they go towards Ibn Sa'd and they talk. And Imam says, what is going on? He says, well, I've been commanded. I must get your fealty. I must get your bay'ah. I must get your submission now or I must kill you now. Imam says, if that is what you wish, give us one night. Ibn Sa'd hesitates. Because if he hesitates, then he will think that he's weak, you see. He thinks that Ibn Ziyad, look how he's trying to please Ibn Ziyad. Look how he looks up to a tyrant leader to please him. This is the madness of the human race. On judgment day, these are the people who will take them to hell with them. Now, they're doing everything to please them. And Imam Hussain alayhi salam says, you know Ibn Sa'd, we are the family of the Prophet. We love to pray. We do ruku and sujood for the love of God. You will see the signs of sujood on their faces. You know we love to pray. Give us one night to pray. So Ibn Sa'd reluctantly says, okay. And there was a buzzing night. The other side was merrymaking, sharpening their blades, counting what they will get tomorrow from their tyrant kings. While on this side, they're making dua. Each one is saying, I'm going to go before you. No, I'm going to become shaheed before you. No, no, no. Please pray that I become shaheed before you. Can you imagine the difference? Hmm? What a difference between the two groups. You and I today have to decide for the rest of our lives, which side of the army are we on? When we grow up until we die, which side of the army are we on? Because there is nothing more conspicuous when it comes to haq, meaning halal and haram, than Karbala. And they prayed. And Imam went into sujood and he made such du'as. Continuously. Continuously praying, my Lord, I love you, my Lord. How, ple how pleased I am to have this option. Imam Hussain alayhi salam, as he's approaching Karbala, Ali Akbar is with him. He looks up and he says, inna lillah. And he says, what happened? He said, I see animals devouring my flesh. The metaphor. Animals. Cutting. He said, but it's okay. We have sold our souls for Allah. Let us go. That sacrifice, take 1%, 2%, all of us. Let's live it. And you and I will be there in the company, inshallah, judgment day. Inshallah. So the Imam now looks around, he says, Aina Ali Akbar, he's gone. Aina Abbas, he's gone. Aina Habib ibn Madad, he's gone. All the companions are dead. All killed, killed, all of them. Imam takes everybody and brings it back. Everybody brings it back. Some he could not, he just left it there. He could not, it was difficult. And Imam is looking around and he says, is there anyone to help me? Then he hears his infant child. His name is Abdullah. As you know, Imam Hussain had a six month old baby, which he took with him to Karbala to show you how he didn't want to fight, to show you how he loved peace, to show you how he was going to expose the tyrancy and to show you his compassion. He goes to the mother of Abdullah, her name was Rabab. Oh my God, Rabab. If there is a dream we should have in our fantasies among men to have a spouse, she'd be like Rabab. Rabab was an amazing woman. She had two children in Karbala, Ruqayya, who's known as Sakina, and Abdullah, who's known as Ali al -Asdar. Both of these were in Karbala. And this young child was barely, barely crying because it had no energy anymore. It was too thirsty. And its tongue was sticking out, parched, dry. The father is feeling this pain that my son his baby, six month baby. Sakina is crying. This little young girl is tugging onto his clothes. Baba, Atta, we are thirsty. How can a father just go and become massacred? He has to show that compassion at least to make an effort. He says to Rabab, give me this child. Maybe, maybe there is some 
some level of compassion in those enemies, and I want to expose it. I want to give them a chance. You find that he takes this child, hands are dangling, he's holding it. I can't imagine that image. Allah, in my years of all the years, I've tried to contemplate and meditate. Karbala, this to me is the most treacherous, honestly. For a six month old baby, you know, when my daughter was born, if you have a little scratch, you get worried, oh my God, she's bleeding, what's going on, she's sick. I remember one time she was sick, I took her to the hospital, my wife. And I was so disturbed, like, what's, what's going to happen? Which, which doctor is going to look at her? How is she going to come out healthy? Just, I'm a father, and I'm in a hospital. I'm in a safe environment. Imam Sayyid al salam has no such luxuries. He's taking this infant, beautiful child, and he puts it up and says, okay, you people, you don't like me. You have a grudge against me. You have a grudge against my father, Ali. What wrong has this baby done? At least feed this baby. If you have any compassion, feed it. It will not harm him. It will not harm you. Subhanallah, look at how amazing the reality is. The soldiers started looking because the Imam was the master of bringing people to Allah. Bil hikmah. <laughs> he said, if you think I'm going to drink this water, then I will put it down and you feed it. The army starts to look and says, that's a possibility. Ibn Sa'd looks the other way, he says, this is dangerous. For if this man can incite compassion in my army, then they won't kill him. So Ibn Sa'd looks at Hurmala. As you know, Hormala was an archer. He was a very, very precise archer. His archery skills were impeccable. He looks at Hormala and says to Hormala, silence this child, silence this call. While the Imam is talking, and he's invoking them to look at this beautiful little baby. <laughs> Hormala pulls a three-pronged arrow and strikes it into the neck of this little infant child. And it shrieks, this baby scream, ah, like this, it shrieks. And they say the arrow plunged into the Imam's arm a little bit too, and he began to bleed, and the blood is flowing. Allah, like. He looks up, he says, Rabbana taqabbal hadha. My Lord, accept this sacrifice for instead of feeding him water. They replied with this three prong arrow. Imam goes back and he sees his wife is standing there. He says, How am I going to take this child back to her? Now I took her, took him away from his mother. Rabab is standing and she's watching this. Inna lillah. Zainab is standing on the hill looking. says, Wow, Zain, what are they doing? What have they done? Zainab used to send curses on them. Shame on you, you foolish people. Shame on you, you reckless people. Imam comes back with this baby. He goes back. He says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi wa mi amri. My Lord, we are satisfied with this tragedy. We are satisfied and we submit. With the and the Amri. We submit to this command and you have taken this away from me. Oh, you enemies, no problem. I have trust in Allah. And the Imam in his weak state takes the, his sword and he digs a hole by the tent. He digs a hole by the tent. And he buries this little baby lifeless who has left this world innocent. He buries it, covers it. You know, after the history of Karbala, meaning after the event of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, these wretched people went and took this baby out of its grave, beheaded it, and put it on a spear to take it to the king. That's how bad they are. And the little head of Ali al Asghar was even presented to Yazid. Imam Hussein 
is now left. He looks around. Everybody's gone. Imam Sayyid al Abidin is standing up and says, Baba, I will help. He said, No, I will now whisper, Ruhul Qudus, I'm going to give you special knowledge. For I'm now just giving up this to you. You are my successor. And they said, Every Imam before they left, when the Prophet left also, he whispered into the ears of the Imam and he transferred special knowledge, Ruhul Qudus. And Imam Zain al-Abidin Imam Zain al -Abidin received it. Imam says, you are now the Imam al-Waqt. And you will manage the affairs as Allah commanded you. Then he goes to his sister Zainab. He goes to Zainab and he says, my sister, it's time for me to go. Give me those Yemeni trousers that I have. Let me wear it. He puts on and he says, tear it. Rip it up. So it has no value because these people are so wretched that they will even take my clothes. He puts on the green turban, Imam Sayyid, and he bids his sister goodbye. She kisses him on his chest. She says, my brother, this pain. And he says, Zainab, please be patient. Don't hurt yourself. Be patient, Zainab. There's a big trial awaiting you, Zainab. I can't imagine that conversation. I, if I hear this conversation in true life, I don't think I'll ever overcome it because there's nothing in the universe more powerful than this conversation. Where he's leaving her and saying, Zainab, you will have such difficulty, but be patient, Zainab. They say when Zainab returns to Medina, even her husband doesn't recognize her because she aged so much. The pain was horrendous. He said, but be patient, Zainab, for there's a big child upon you. <laughs> she bids him goodbye. And then, you know, this little child, Ruqayya, Imam is now, has to leave this little four-year-old. Allahu Akbar, Ruqayya. You know, Ruqayya became Shahida soon after Karbala. Ruqayya is a four-year-old daughter. I can empathize a little bit because I have a daughter. <laughs> And when your daughter sleeps on your chest, it's the greatest moment of your life. <laughs> that this Zaina, this little, little child of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Ruqayya, is now sleeping on his chest whenever she would sleep. Now she will not have a chest. Historians say that she was running on the battlefield looking for her father's body so she could put her head on his chest. And he bids her goodbye. How, how does a father bid goodbye to a daughter like this? How do you say, when do you end it? When can you leave? When can you turn your eye away from this beloved child? I know when I travel and I say goodbye to my daughter, I just don't want to take my eyes off of her. Even Jinnah Hussain, he's in love with God. He says, you are my success. You are my success. This little Ruqayya holds on to him. And you know the sad thing is, Ruqayya cried so much that when she was in Damascus in the palace of Yazid, she cried so much. Yazid was annoyed by it. This same little Ruqayya was so he was so annoyed by her crying. So they say he says, "Why is this little girl crying?" He says, "He's missing her father." He says, "Then give her her father." In prison, they bring the head of Imam Hussein. And historians say that when she looked, she uncovered the head, she held it. <laughs> she started talking to it, kissing it, having a private conversation with her father. And then there was this deafening silence. <laughs> Zainab goes to her and says, Rukhaya. Imam Zainab Rukhaya, not waking up. She left this world. <laughs> she says, what? What is there to live? A four-year-old girl. This dhulam is unprecedented. And Imam, when he gets on his horse, and he's about to leave, she's still holding on to him. He doesn't know what to do. How do you say goodbye to a four-year-old? Imam goes forward. Historians say that when he stood up on the horse, 
They said, when this man approached us, Imam Hussain goes towards the enemy and gives them a last advice, but they don't listen. They said, we saw a lion coming to us, a lion. He would charge, we would all run. He would charge, we would all run. We saw the Prophet's face on him. They said, we saw the Prophet so much, we couldn't understand it. We were dumbfounded. How much shuja'at and strength Imam Hussain alayhi salam had. And he fought, and he dislodged many. But finally, they pelted him with so many rocks. They pelted him with so many arrows. Historians say he was filled with arrows. <laughs> and he's still writing. And he's reciting ayahs of Quran. There's so much to say, but I'm too emotional. I can't express it. And then he fights until he's subdued and struck. And he falls off his horse. And then he goes into a state of sujood. I want us to understand that Imam asked for salah before he went, as you know, at Zuhr time. Abu Thamama was one of the companions in Karbala. He said, Ya, ya ibn Rasulullah, it's time for salah. Imam says, in this most difficult moment you remembered salah, may God raise you among the prayerful ones. The way Ibrahim prayed, Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salati wa min dhurriyati. You know, Ibrahim alayhi salam sacrificed his son Ismail. And when he went up the mountain and he, Allah replaced him, wa And then Ismail, when his father told him, Inni ara fil manam, I see in my dream that I should, ex I should sacrifice you. He says, If alma tu'mar, satajiduni inshallah min as sabirin. Do what you've been commanded. Maybe I will be among the patient ones. Allah delays it. And who? is more patient than the children of Ismail than Imam Hussein salam in Karbala. That he's so patient, but he's so prayerful. They say Abu Thamama, Zuhair bin Qain, and almost 30% to 40% of his army was killed during Salah. Imam gave it all up for Salah. Now, as he's being hit, and he's falling, and he's now on the earth, the scorching hot sands of Karbala, and he's got his head on the ground and he's making dua and he's praying to Allah. My Lord, I love you. My Lord, I love you. <laughs> Shiver comes from the back. <laughs> so many of them tried to get his head, but they couldn't because every time they looked at him, they saw the Prophet, they said, no, we can't. But Shimmer was a heartless human being. He gets on the back of the blessed Imam and takes a blood dive <laughs> and he ends it, Allah. Kad khutil al Husaynu bi Karbala. Allah says, Ya yatun nafsul matma'inna irji ila rabbiki radiyatun mardiya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati Zainab alayhi salam says, Allah, kad khutil al Husayn, they have killed my Husayn. <laughs> they took his head, paraded it. They brought 40 horsemen to crush his body because they were so angry. He didn't give but Imam says, no problem. For well, I have sacrificed myself, Allah. You will never get me to bow to shaitan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم. We say to Allah سبحانه وتعالى, we say to the زيارة, we say أشهد أنك. We're talking about the Imam. قد قمت الصلاة وآتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونهيت عن المنكر وعتعت الله ورسوله حتى أتاك اليقين. We bear witness. Ashhadu anna ka qad aqamta salah. Oh Allah, bear witness. We bear witness that our blessed Imam maintained prayer. Qad aqamta salah. Wa aatayta zakah. And he gave charity. Wa amarta bil ma'roof. He promoted good. Wa nahayta anil munkar. And he demoted evil. Wa ata'ata Allah wa rasoolahu. And he obeyed Allah and his Prophet. Hatta ata'ka al-yaqeen. 
until we were certain. And because through his actions, he showed us actions. Assalamu alaikum Abu Abdullah al Hussein. May Allah give us the tawfiq, inshallah. And when we drink water, and when we live every single day, every time we drink this water, if you and I have a moment, please send salams to the blessed Imam. For when Imam Zain al Abideen would pass by any time a well where people would be drinking water, he would remember Karbala. Let's live by those standards, inshallah. And inshallah, we will succeed. We do five times. In this blessed night, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to eradicate the evil that is prevalent in the world, to enable us to be the role models and the strength and the tongue and the wealth and the health in the bodies that Allah has created for you and I, that oh Allah infused that strength in us to be the bearers of justice and, and for goodness on earth. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return our Imam is present among us, but to bring him back to us and to lead the world as Allah says, It is our desire, you oppressed, that you will become the leaders and inheritors. We pray soon around the corner that we have this victory so the world can live in peace and in tranquility and not with the war machines that are taking place with tyranny in the world today. May Allah give us the tawfiq, inshallah, to become the role model voices. And this community is a blessing. You, you know, I really, really, tomorrow, inshallah, I will speak more, but I can't thank you enough for your patience, for your kindness. But the most beautiful thing is that you've all taken the time to come and listen to the message of Imam Hussein alayhi I know sisters, brothers who come from an hour and a half from distant places just to come and listen to these lectures. How powerful, how beautiful they are. Please apply it appreciate it, and let us put it in action so our spirits don't fade away after these tw 10 nights of Muharram, inshallah. Let's recite five times, <laughs> I believe strongly that when we are sick, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Joshan Kabir, for example, recite Joshan Kabir, recite the du'as our Imams have left us with. These are golden sentences that have been prescribed precisely to affect change in us. I'll talk tomorrow, inshallah, about the power of prayer, if time allows me how to make dua, given the time that tomorrow is my last lecture. And I really ask us all never to give up dua, for dua is silah al-Muslim. It is the way that brings peace within us. It is the way for our success, inshallah, dua, dua. Researchers have studied there's nothing more important than prayer. When you and I become ill, our money, our power, our notoriety, nothing will help us, only prayer. Prayer is the most powerful thing. Even Harvard did studies that people who were prayed for got cured more than those who were not prayed for, even though those who were prayed for didn't know they were being prayed for. Think about it, that when you and I do pray and we know we are praying for each other, how powerful that is. Let's not underestimate the power of dua. Quran is filled with verses of dua. Let's spend time reading it, please. As you know, people have asked me about this Al Mizan fi Tafsir al Quran. If you go to tawheed.com.au, almost all the volumes are being published now. Spend time, read them, please. Read the books by philosophers like Mutahari and Shaykh Bakr Sadr. These are great books that you and I should understand, even at a simple level. Let us improve our knowledge. History, very important for us to know what happened in history. Know the politics of today. Understand the psychology of human beings. It's a lot to ask for. We need to start somewhere. Together, please. We'll recite five times. And I thank you all for this kindness. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.
Let's send salam to Imam Sa'ab al-Zaman, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma kum li waliyika al-hujjati ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai. Fi hadi al-sa'a wa fi kulli sa'a wa li تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلاة العب محمد وآل محمد
Come on. 